Hello everyone. In this video today we're going to continue talking about algorithms, specifically cost and runtime. I'm going to scroll up a little bit here and just go over briefly what we talked about last time. So we defined what is an algorithm, we gave the definition, we used a couple of analogies, one of washing clothes and a wood chipper to help us better understand that. And last thing we went over was what made a good algorithm. We said that it needed to be correct, it needed to have well-defined preconditions and postconditions, and that the last thing, cost and runtime and memory, we didn't go over. So that's what we're going to do today. And again, memory, cost and memory is beyond the scope of this class, so we're going to talk about runtime. So let's move down here. So the last thing that we mentioned in the video was how do we compare the same algorithm, I think we used the example of bubble sort, ran on two different computers. So the question today is how do we compare two different algorithms ran on two different computers? So if we ran bubble sort over here and we ran radix sort or something over here, it doesn't matter if you don't know what radix sort is. But the question is how do two programmers writing two different algorithms compare them, try to do the same thing, compare them across distance and time and running on different operating systems. And the way we do that is what is called big O notation. So to, to go over that, I'm going to pull up some code here. I've chosen here not to do any sort of uh, sorting algorithm or anything like that because that's, that's not what I want you to learn today. What we want to learn today is how do we come up with this big O notation. And what big O notation is, it's a worst case scenario for how long it takes our algorithm to run. Remember that all algorithms we have some sort of input and then we're going to have a, a final output and what we want to measure is as that input as it gets really large as we input a lot of data into our algorithm how is it going to behave and we want the worst case scenario that way we can compare two algorithms to say okay if I give you know X size array to this algorithm and ask to sort it how does it compare to giving the same size array to another algorithm and how we do that is pretty simple, actually. We just go through and we count the number of lines that the program is going to have to execute. So here we have our main statement, it's calling this function, and I just want to look at just this function. Okay, so let's say this is our algorithm. When it reads in, when it starts, the top line, it's gonna, first, we're declaring an array. So an array of size four, and it's gonna read that line, so that's just gonna be one line, so we're just gonna put one there. And then next is going to read this for loop, and that's going to be the second line it reads. And x in this situation, it's starting at 0, and while x is less than 4. So x is 0, then it makes the location 0 equals 0 in this case. So that's our third line it's going to read. And then it's going to go back up here, and that's going to be the fourth line it's going to read. It's going to check and make sure that x is still less than 4 x has just been iterated it's one so it's still less than four so it's going to go to the next line and it's going to make location one equal one that's going to be our fifth line and this is kind of painful but i'm just going to keep going through it so now we just iterated x it's two and so that's still less than four so it's gonna it's already read this line it's checked that it said okay that's good so it's going to move on and it's going to set location two or technically location three equal to two and so that's going to be our seventh line. And then it's going to move back up here and it's going to check this line. And so we're going to make that eight. And X in this situation, we started, it's kind of confusing, but we started X here at zero, one, and two. So in this situation, X is going to be three. Three is still less than four. So it's going to move down here and nine. Then it's going to move back up it's going to iterate x. x is now 4, and it's going to say, okay, is 4 less than 4? Well, that's that's not true. It does have to read this line, so that's going to be location 10, but it is not going to execute the next line of our code, and it's going to actually just exit out. That's the last line of code. So the cost of this particular function right here, it's going to be it's going to read 10 lines of code. It's important to remember, especially for a test or if you get a quiz on this, that it does the for loop does check one last time. This last line of code is ran one more time, even though it doesn't ex uh, even though it doesn't execute anything inside. So that's really important. You might try to do something kind of kind of cheeky, or maybe a little maybe a little smart, but you might try to do something like this. So to actually help yourself. So maybe if you're just not, you're confused, you're not sure what to do, um, 
you're, you're afraid you're wrong, you're just nervous, you're on a test. And all I've done here, if you look, this is actually, I'm going to space this down a little bit. This is actually the exact same code. I've just added some to it. So I've I made a counter here, set it equal to zero. And then since C++ doesn't care about white space, I put this on the same line. So I still have inline here. And then I put counter, uh, same thing here, this function, this bracket functions as an inline. And then I just put counter plus plus. And I just went through and told it each time to just iterate through the counter. And then I was told to print, print the counter, right? And we're talking about counting lines of code, so I didn't iterate the counter here. So even though it reads this line, it's not counting it. So it's not going to count towards our algorithm. The only problem is, watch when I actually run this code, is I get 9. And the reason is, the reason I get 9 and not 10, it's because when it reads this for loop one more time, it stops here. It does not read this counter plus plus. It just stops. It comes, it checks this last condition. It says, okay, X is not less than four. So I'm going to exit. And then it does not read this line. So if you, if you try to do something like this, do you just, or even if you don't just remember that this for loop is always going to run one more time. It's the same with a while loop. It's going to check it again. The only situation, if you have like a do while loop, if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it, but that would be one situation, but that's just knowing what your function is doing. Um, so that, you know, if you're having to enter in nine or 10 on a test and it's either all credit or no credit, hopefully this will help you get it correct. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off here because we're at about a little over six minutes. And in the next video, I'll go ahead and make the, the firm connection between simply counting lines and big O notation.